Hey guys, today I am going to talk about the Timmies and how much they're suffering right now and how angry they are at everyone, including some of them rightfully so at Alpha Investments. So if you're a Timmy, you put a bunch, bunch of money in a mystery repack, which is never a good idea. And then you want to do grading companies, again, never a good idea. I mean, I wish somebody actually told you all this stuff instead of trying to sell their own shit upon you. But that's where we are right now. I, I do think that Alpha Investments has sold things that are now he's reaping the he's reap he sows what he reaps, right? Or he reaps what he sows. And a lot of them are broke. Um, a lot of these Timmies are not super expensive. You can tell from their comments, their hateful comments to me often are racist. Often they have our ad hominem attacks. So instead of attacking the argument, they'll make up their own argument. They're either straw hats, right? Straw hat arguments. And they don't seem quite educated or intelligent in their responses, right? Or they'll make fun of the way I say something. So I've spoke to thousands of people in tech, thousands of lawyers, I have never had one of them make fun of the way I speak. Um, only in these comments where Rudy Chan sends his lemmings do most of them just talk about the way I speak instead of what I'm talking about. And that's kind of the difference between my other channel and this channel is it's slightly more intellectual. Not, I mean slightly, but it's, you can see it. Here, I can tell most of the Timmies are working McDonald's or Taco Bell's. That's why these jokes are pie. That's why these jokes are funny to them. Because they six nine six nine right they, they they would put their whole life savings into FTX just because the guy loves the number six nine they would invest because uh, this guy loves six nine um, in the Rolex you don't see anyone doing that like you don't see no Rolex deal even the ones in jail they don't do six nine because they it's not professional it's not business like so I see that Rudy's audience in particular they seem to gravitate towards six nines right and these fun crude jokes that aren't really that funny especially when they don't have girlfriends they're living in their parents basements right and uh six nine to them is hilarious because they've never actually been in a relationship you know that's why it's funny to them and Rudy knows this uh Rudy targets them with the six nine products and the six nine percent of the grading company giving you know oh wow this is a great grading company six nine right but if you really name the grading company six nine or something, no one would ever invest in it or put money in it. His other partners would probably think he's crazy. Uh, the way that real business is done is not done uh, on cardboard. Cardboard is unregulated. It is a lot of pump and dumps all the time. Um, and you know, just speaking frankly and just kind of getting it out there is I, I cover I, my other channel. I cover a guy who went to jail. Now he's sitting in jail right now, awaiting a trial. And there are a lot of similarities between Anthony Farrar and this guy here. Um, the way they talk, the way they act, the way they block people when they're angry. Thanks for bumping my post. If you're from that channel, you know what that means, right? And the comments, uh, the people commenting to defend Alpha Investment are almost the same kind of level of intelligence uh, in terms of their arguments, right? Their arguments are never ever based on what I'm saying. It's always based on what I look like, how I talk, how I pronounce things. And it's all fun and games, but it doesn't actually further the debate. And at some point in time, you just start blocking people because that's all they have to offer. They have nothing else to offer other than to ad hominem attacks, which is not debatable. Like if somebody said something that was really interesting, I'd probably make a video about it. Why not? It's content, right? But the majority of people from Rudy's channel, they are 6 ers right? So like if 6 9 to you is really funny and the reason that you want to spend $700 on a mystery repack, that's who the demographic is. Um, they're not the... Let's say that they don't own Rolexes. I got probably put it that way for you. And it's really hard to communicate with them and it's almost impossible to explain to them basic economics of like why you should not buy more cards during a time where more cards are being printed right um the whole low oh though i mean do you know that throne of the elder Inn is still being sent by distributor you can still buy from your distributor today collectors boxes specifically collector boxes 
Isn't that crazy, right? Isn't this supposed to be like an investment opportunity, right? The first collector box. You would think of anything, it would go up, right? But it's still being sold for 20 bucks a pack um, from your distributor. I mean, amazing, right? Uh, and then the single things and so on. I find that a lot of the information, the information that Rudy says is actually just false. If you have a distributor, you would know that. Um, a lot of the conversations that you would be having with the distributor would... Um, you know, in, in legal terms, like if you keep saying, I have a source in Hasbro, I have a source in Hasbro, then you joke the source is you, you probably don't have a source in Hasbro, right? I mean, imagine if we're in court and the judge is like, okay, so who's your source? No, it's me. It's like, no, like who's your source? Oh, I'm protecting, I mean, at, at some point in time, like you either have to say, this is my source and this is, you know, who he is and this is his position and this is why I trust him or you don't. You guys stop talking about the dude because the dude's been wrong about a lot of stuff. Um, so even that is a little weird to me. Uh, how he always talks about having a source in Hasbro, this company he is going to uh, hostile takeover. And uh, yeah, the negativity is getting to, to him. Um, I'm okay with it. I'm used to it. I live in the negativity of these comments, right? It is what it is, right? Uh, but I don't think he's used to it. And I think that's the problem for him because long term, you have to have very tough scales to deal with magic people because they're never going to. And, and this is the same for his negativity. They're going to they're never going to actually have a good discussion with you. Otherwise, they would already have YouTube channels where they could present these arguments. They're never going to have a reasonable conversation with you. They're never going. I mean, they just want to do the quick boom, bam, gone. Right. And I think in terms of uh, the future of uh, Alpha Investments and, and you know where he's going, his channel is very depending on where these card games are going. And if these card games go to zero, he's, he's losing subscribers. His uh, big uh, Ask Me Anything is going to fail because it didn't honestly have enough. I mean, the negativity is certainly getting to him, and it shouldn't. It doesn't get to me. Um, I mean, I have two channels, and before uh, the guy went to jail and confessed to his crimes, it was a lot of haters. It was a ton of haters on that, and way more than anything on this because they, they get more views. The videos get, I think the video today got 4,000 views um, already, and it was less than, it was like a few hours. Um, those videos get more views, therefore they draw more attention, therefore they might draw more haters, right? And people were saying, oh, you're wrong about this guy. You're wrong about this guy. He's a great guy. You know, and even bigger channels, much bigger than Rudy Chan in the watch market, uh, would support this guy. And um, he's in jail. And now everyone is like, wow, you're so great. <laughs> uh, I think in, in the future, the negativity is probably what's going to bring down Alpha Investments. Uh, he clearly cannot deal with it, in my opinion. Anyway, hey guys.